Hey, good morning. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Uh, it is good to be here with you guys. It's good to be uh, in the house of the Lord this morning, and uh, especially among a bunch of faces that we know. And you know what? A bunch of faces that we don't know. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Brian Reisner. Uh, I'm the BMA missionary to Romania. So my family and I, uh, we moved to Romania in 2018, five years ago uh, now. And I uh, can't believe it's been five years, but it has and um, God has done amazing things in Romania, and I'm going to give you an update on what we've been doing in Romania up to this point. And uh, so bear with me, and we're going to go through the PowerPoint with you guys. Um, so um, we are the Reisners in Romania. That's where uh, kind of our, uh, we have a Facebook page. If you have Facebook, uh, you can follow us. We also have an Instagram account if you have Instagram. That's the easiest way to get the up-to-date information all the time because we post almost every day uh, or every other day. We'll post information about what we're doing, pictures and videos and announcements. And, of course, we'll send a monthly newsletter out as well. Um, but I want to start off talking uh, about our ministry, talking about what we've been doing. So uh, in May 2022... Uh, we had, um, we was at in Brashov, which was uh, six hours east of where we was living at. Um, so let me just bring, back up just for a second. For those that don't know, uh, we moved to Romania 2018. We did one year of grammar school, and then we started work with the gypsies, the most hated people group in Europe. And we started planning a church with the gypsies about two and a half years, and then we moved to Brashov, six hours east of where we was at, started a second church plant called Return Church. Now, during that time, the war started. Now, you guys know Russia evaded Ukraine, and, and we actually didn't know how severe that was going to be. We was being told it was only going to be in the east side of Ukraine that they was going to attack. But when they started covering the whole country, we got nervous because we have the biggest land border with Ukraine. It's the Ukraine is in our north, so uh, we're only two hours away from Ukraine where we live at. So we was a little bit nervous, but we expected a lot of refugees to start pouring over into the countries, and they did. And we started working at a camp. Uh, the camp was called Camp Hope. It was about 15 minutes from where we lived. And we started working with the Ukrainian refugees. We did that for three months straight. Every day we went there. Every Sunday I preached a message to them. I was the camp cha uh, the chaplain, I guess you could say. And um, mainly we just sat with them and cried with them. Uh, we just sat there and just let them talk. Just let them share. Let them get their feelings off, uh, off their chest because they had a lot of emotions. Mainly there was women and children. There wasn't very many adults at all, uh, males at all, because the, male had, the guys had to stay back unless they had a disability. So we had a couple of guys with disabilities, but predominantly we had all females and, and, uh, and their kids with us there. And uh, it was heartbreaking. It, it was something that... Um, I can't describe, you know, you hear about wars and you hear about these things, but, but it's really not next door to you. Uh, but when it's only a couple hours away, it changes your perspective on things. And then also when you're, when you're hearing their stories about how their families are dying and how their, how their, how their uh, friends are dying around them. And when you re receive uh, uh, messages from them sending you videos of, of air raid sirens and, and, their, and their homes being uh, exploded by bombs, um, it, it, it changes things. It changes your perspective on ministry. And so we started working heavily there in doing that. And uh, we did that uh, until the point where they decided that it was, uh, they wanted to go back home to their, to their husbands. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we started to help them through that process. About that time, we was about a year and a half with Return Church, the second church plant that we planted there. And things was going well, so we wanted to transition uh, into a, a, another opportunity. What was God leading us to next? Uh, because we came to Romania to plant churches, plural, and um, so what could we do? We, we go into an area, and my goal is to work my way out of a job. I'm not there to plant an American church in Romania. I'm not there for the American pastor to pastor a church for 20 years in Romania. That's not what we're there for. We're there to get 
churches started, to plant churches, to establish them, to get them to be rolling on their own, to find my man of peace, my Timothy, the person that can pastor the church, and then to step back and then start another church plant. So our, our goal was, where is God sending us next? So about that time when we was in Brushov, uh, my brother Danny Bagoshi uh, came to help us with the camp. We was needing to repair some things there at this camp. The camp was actually non-functional before the war started. It was run down. A matter of fact, the main, uh, the main cabin, the main area that had the kitchen and had all the rooms, it didn't even have any walls before the, wall, the war started. A horse was living inside the bottom of it. And uh, so we had to, there was a lot of work that had to get uh, invested to be able to make a safe environment for the Ukrainians to come to. And so uh, uh, actually we, um, they're pretty strict in Romania with, the, with codes. Uh, you, everything has to be up to code, kind of like it is here in, in Arkansas. And um, so the, the mayor came and the inspectors came and, and we wasn't up to code, but they said, look, if you're going to host the refugees, we'll we'll let you start. So that's what we did. We started, and then we started repairing as we went. So uh, Danny Bagoshi came there, and he was helping me uh, one day, one week, and uh, during that meeting, he started talking to me, and he, he said, listen, um, I'm thinking about resigning from a church that I'm pastoring and planting a new church in Aradia. Uh, and this church, and he started sharing with, with me his vision, and it was exactly the vision that I felt God was giving me to do and to plant a church in Aradia, just like he had. So we're, we got, both got excited when he shared his vision and I shared my vision. It was a very exci- exciting, exciting time with, with us. And so we started praying about it, and we started to, to think about the possibilities of another church plant. Well, in June of 2022 until August, uh, we came on in furlough in America, and during that time, we prayed about the possibilities of going to Arati up to plant this church plant. I believe I shared that with you guys during that time, that we was in a praying process uh, about, to, about the next church plant after return. And in September of 2022, so from September to December, um, we began the transition, a season of transitions. Um, we went to... Um, um, we, we, we went and started continuing to support Return Church, but we also started spending some time in Aradia in prayer and in, in getting things started there in Romania. Uh, we would visit there uh, about every month, and then uh, we started uh, our church meetings in Danny's home during that time as well. And here is a picture of, our, of our, uh, what we started doing in Danny's house. Now, Danny, he doesn't have a huge house, but we had a big congregation started coming immediately. We had almost 60 to 70 people in the bottom of his living room, and we was packed out. We, are, uh, we started, uh, you know, compared to the Roma Gypsy ministry or compared to return ministry, it, was, it went normal. It was slow. Agape ministry exploded. It was totally faster than I anticipated. I didn't anticipate having so many people. Matter of fact, we had so people downstairs during the worship service. Upstairs, he had four bedrooms. One of them bedrooms was an office, small office. And we had all full, full, uh, four of the uh, rooms upstairs occupied with Sunday school classes and teen classes. And, uh, and, and, and it was just amazing. God was doing big things there in a little house in Romania, uh, in, Danny, in Danny's house. Um, so we continued to meet there. We continued to pray. We continued to see what God was going to do there. And he did things in, 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 a, in an awesome way. Uh, matter of fact, uh, we got so big so fast that we had to start looking for another building, a, a place to meet, because we was too many people in his home. So we started looking, and we actually found a, a building right down the road from Danny's house in the community that we wanted to plant a church in. So it was great. It was a great opportunity. Uh, it, had, it was a new building. They had, was finishing it. They wasn't even done painting the walls inside uh, when we started talking about renting it from them. And so we started, uh, when we were allowed uh, to, to make our first deposit, they gave us our keys. We spent about two days cleaning all the dust and all the stuff that, you know, comes off a new, a new house project. And uh, so we started doing that, and uh, we started getting excited. We started seeing what God was doing there. Um, we, had to, we had to, then, once we got the building, we had to figure out where we was going to sit. 
because we didn't have any seats or any chairs. It was kind of funny when we was meeting in Danny's house, uh, we would go to his neighborhood. He had several friends, and we would go to like three different houses and borrow all their kitchen table chairs. So we, everybody would go to a house. We would take their six chairs from their kitchen table, and we would all take them to Danny's house. We would set them, you know, set them out, and we still didn't have any, enough seats. And then we, after service, we would have to carry the chairs back to their house to put them back at their kitchen table. And uh, so when we got to the new building, we said, we, have, we can't do that anymore. We have to have new chairs. Well, that means new price, new you know, uh, money that we had to raise. And God blessed us with uh, the money to be able to raise to buy 200 chairs that you see there. So that was a huge deal uh, and a huge help of, uh, uh, that we needed from church support. And uh, you guys was a part of that. So here is the building that we rented. Uh, it, it's, it's right there off the main street there in the, in the village that we're in, Aradia, that we're working in. And God was doing such amazing things there and through there. Uh, we had our first Sunday service, uh, and our first Sunday service, it was packed. I got a little scared because we was packing Danny's house, and now we're in our first Sunday service, and we doubled that amount of people, and now we're almost too big for the new building that we just started renting. And I said, okay, Lord, you know, this is exciting. This is a good thing, but we're, we're going to have to go to two services at the beginning of the, of the, of the church plant or something. You know, we're kind of, we was excited about it to see what God was doing, but he was moving in a, in, in a mighty way. Uh, our leadership team is myself uh, there in the blue shirt, uh, and then uh, Adrian Toma in the middle, and then Danny Bagoshi over there in the, in the far right. And we're the three pastors there at Agape. And, and uh, again, I'm temporary. <laughs> so I'm on a temporary basis there. I'm just there long enough to get it going so then Danny and Adi can take over as leadership because they're Romanians. Again, I want to stress that we want to plant a Romanian church. And so I want them to see the American less and more in the background uh, as, as soon as we can. And uh, God is blessing us to be able to do that soon. Uh, uh, Adi has uh, had multiple church plant opportunities uh, in his career. And, of course, Danny has pastored a church and worked with the BMA for over 20 years. So we have a good team of guys very connected to the BMA and uh, our, our BMA change makers. And uh, we're doing this church plant together. Now, we have uh, several things that we got started with when we, when we, we started doing it uh, there. We started week in, uh, meeting weekly during our Agape ministry programs. Uh, we started doing Sunday morning worship service and children's program. So every Sunday morning, we're doing a worship service like we're in now. And then we have a children's program, just like you're having now. So it basically looks like a church, right? Because we are a church. And so we was excited to kind of see this. Keep in mind, when I was doing the Roma Village church plants, we was meeting right outside in the gravel parking lot. There was no buildings. There was no walls. Uh, it was not really structured like a church, but it was an amazing experience. But I am thankful to have a building where we can have our separate classrooms and, 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 and our worship service separately. Uh, on sun, uh, Sunday mornings, following the service, we do our new believers course, and we think this is important because when a person gives their life to Jesus for the first time, um, there's some things they need to learn, some basic stuff. So we try to walk alongside them uh, and, and basically teach them our doctrine, teach them about salvation, teach them about the church, teach them about the, 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 the Trinity, teach them about, uh, about prayer, about angels, about, about Satan and demons, right? All the things they need to know, basically, at what we teach us in our doctrine, we do in our New Believers class about 20 minutes right after the Sunday morning service. And uh, so this is the best time. They're already there, and uh, we, can, we can go through this course with them. About six weeks is what we do, usually a New Believers course for six weeks. Uh, then we have a Sunday evening service, and it's, it's basically a discipleship course. Uh, Adi is very good in discipling, and uh, he loves it. And so, uh, he, he, matter of fact, he, 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 sh he taught the other day, I loved his analogy. He said, hey, let me ask you a question, talking to the audience. And he said, how many he said, of you knows how old you are? And like, we're looking at him like, what? <laughs> well, I hope we know how old we are. And he said, no, no, I'm not talking about your physical age. I'm talking about your spiritual age. And then everybody's like, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, well, how old am I? You know, spiritually, how old are you? And he says, how many uh, of you has, ha has kids? And, you know, almost all of us raised our hands. And he says, well, let me ask you a question. How many of you would take your newborn baby home from the hospital, 
sit them in the recliner, give them the TV remote, tell them there's a TV, in the kitchen is the microwave, help yourself, we'll be back and see you next Sunday. Well, nobody will do that to a newborn baby, right? And he says, but how many do, times do we do that to newborn Christians? Oh, okay, you're a newborn Christian. Here's a remote. Here's a comfortable chair. Have fun. We'll be back and see you next week. But they should be a discipleship something. We should be discipling our people, right? So um, he teaches that on Sunday night. He teaches the discipleship course uh, to, to the people there. Uh, and then on Thursdays, every uh, other week, we have our man's, uh, man's um, uh, study and then our lady study separately. And then monthly, um, we do monthly programs. Twice a month, I do the, the student pastor. I'm a student, pa- the student pastor there. Hey, once a student pastor, I guess always a student pastor. It runs in your blood. Um, and so I started doing that because they needed, uh, they needed that position to be, be filled. And then... Uh, once a month, I'll we'll teach some kind of training program. Uh, right now, we're doing I'm teaching a marriage course uh, once a month to the people. So that's what we've been doing there at Agape, and God is just really showing up and, and blessing, blessing. We also have a children's program, and uh, some of you might know Kendra Barnett. So Kendra uh, was actually my student in 2015 to go to when I took. Uh, Caitlin Harrison, which was a student here at Russellville, when I took her to the Roman- to Romania for the first time in 2015, uh, Kendra was on that team. That was her second time to Romania, and uh, and now she serves with us in Romania. She's a BMA missionary, and uh, she serves in our children's department. And thank goodness for her. I like children. I love them. I love giving them high fives, and then I'm good. I'm you know <laughs> send them on to class. No, I love children, but I'm not really gifted like she is. And uh, she has patience. She can sit down in the floor with them and play with them. Uh, so she coordinates a whole group of, of volunteers uh, that does her children's program. Uh, we have uh, the love group, the, 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 the little guys. Uh, the love class is ages from 2 to 4. She has the hope class, ages 5 to 7, and the joy class, ages 8 to 12. And, uh, and that's what Kendra has been doing, uh, doing there. Um, we had our first baptism service recently uh, there, and we were so excited for that. Um, we had, uh, we, uh, um, we had, uh, f- during our, during our first, the startup, we had five salvations and, uh, we was able to do a baptism service there and, uh, and God was doing good things. And you can see the guy, the boy there, his name is Bodon and the girl is Yunya and, uh, they both got baptized and, uh, and, and what's really interesting about that is that since then we have more, we actually baptized another wing today already. It's already passed because we're eight hours ahead. Romania is eight hours ahead of you guys. So this morning, Romania time, we baptized, uh, had our second baptism. And as soon as we get back, we have about four more to baptize. And uh, so we are excited and baptizing, and, uh, and God, God's good. There me and Danny is uh, preaching there at Agape, as you see there. We had a busy summer. BMMI team came, uh, and they served as a medical team through the BMA, a bunch of doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, uh, and they came and volunteers, and we did medical programs where we had clinics, and then we shared the gospel, and I was able to hang out with the team. Uh, I was the uh, person that they would, they would send everybody before they could get their medication. We had a pharmacy set up, and before they could get their medicine, they had to go hear the gospel being presented, and I was, had the opportunity to, to share the gospel and then give them their little stamp of approval to go get their medicine, and so it was a, it was a great time. Uh, you see, we set up in churches, in some of our local churches there, and, and had these uh, one-day clinics in, in, in multiple villages uh, around Romania. Uh, and then we had our Perspective College team. Now, Perspective is an Antioch-affiliated uh, college group there in Conway. Um, and uh, so uh, the Antioch uh, College um, pastor is, is Ryan and his wife, Margaret. And they led a big team of college students. And uh, it was great because our st- three kids, Melody, Lindsay, and Landon, they are all at CBC now. They moved in, and they started Monday uh, as freshmen, and they got to spend time with a lot of the students that they are going to be around, and it was a good, it was a good experience. We got to do be a, a vacation Bible school the whole time that they was there. God did amazing things through their team. Um, and then here you see in the, we did the uh, story of David and Goliath, and there one of the students is dressed up as, as Goliath and uh, played games with the Roma gypsy kids. And God blessed and did amazing things there. 
And then we had a volunteer student missions VSM team to come, and it was a great opportunity there. A matter of fact, um, the new pastor at, at Haddaville Missionary Baptist Church, uh, he was there with his son, uh, his son Skyler, and Skyler is actually here this morning, and so he got to spend the time with us in Romania and see the ministry there. And not only did Skyler get to spend time on that VSM team, but so did, um, so did Emily. She's sitting in the back with Landon. She got to spend time in Romania this year and see the ministry there as well, and uh, they're all in the pictures there that you see. Uh, and then here we are in, in the church. We actually did, uh, didn't do vacation Bible school necessarily at Agape because we just did it with the college team. So we did our first English camp, and it was awesome. Listen, we have a big church right across the bridge from where our church is. It's called Bebe SO. It's like the big, you know, show-off church. I hate to say that, but they, all the people will actually go to Bebe SO. And uh, they had vacation Bible school the same time that we was putting on our uh, our, our program, and uh, they had already 500 students to sign up for their, their program. So we was like, man, that's great. Praise the Lord. Like, we was happy for that. But we was thinking, are we going to have any kids show up to ours? You know, that's almost half the, our village. And uh, we had over 70, 60 to 70 kids each day to attend, and that was amazing. I could not believe it. And you can see the, the, the little crowd there that we had during that time. And, uh, and then we had church camp this year. Church camp was amazing. 16 salvations at church camp this year. I was able to preach uh, for five nights in a row. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, uh, I'm not as young as I used to be. So five nights just, uh, straight was pretty challenging for me, but it was worth it. Uh, even if one student got saved, it would be worth it. And it was awesome. And you can see there uh, some of the, 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 the programs that we had at night, the, the, the preaching. And then we had the bonfire at the, the, the last night. Uh, and then there's a picture of the church camp there. So you can see that as well. And uh, so, hey, that's the PowerPoint presentation that I wanted to share with you. Sorry, it's a little lengthy, but you, it's a lot of updating. There's a lot of new things happening, and you guys need to know and see what's happening with us uh, there. So uh, continue to pray for our ministry. Continue to pray for Agape, Biserica Agape. Uh, and uh, we, we find Agape, a, a, you know, a good word. You know, it's unconditional love, and we need to have love, that kind of love for our neighbors. And so that's what we're doing. Hey, if we can transition to the next PowerPoint, um, I'd like to transition to the message this morning. But before we do, um, matter of fact, we're going to read the scripture and then we're going we're gonna to pray. If you would, stand up so we can read the scripture. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15. So Mark chapter 16, verse, verse 15. You can follow in your Bibles or on the, on the screen as well. And it says, and he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. I'm going to read that one more time in case you didn't hear it. And he said to them, go into all of the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here. I pray that the Holy Spirit will move. I pray that the Holy Spirit will, will, will stomp on every person's toe in this building, including myself this morning, God. I pray that you will just have your way, that we cannot just be hearers of the word this morning, but that we can actually apply the message to our lives this week. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. I mean, you may be seated. So... This gospel, the gospel is so important in everything that we do. Matter of fact, there's not anything that we can do that, that is more important than the gospel. And you might say, now wait a minute. What do you mean it's the most important thing that we can do? I love what Charles Spurgeon says. Let's look what he says here. He says, I contend for this, that to gospelize a man is the greatest miracle in the world. All the other miracles are wrapped up in this one. To gospelize a man, or in other words, to convert him, is a greater work than to open the eyes of the blind. Now that's powerful, but that's what we're here to do. We're called to go 
and make disciples of all nations. The Bible tells us in Matthew to, to, that we're going to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to teach them the things that Jesus told us to teach, how he told us to do. He commanded us to do this. He called us to do this. And, and then in, in, in Acts chapter 1, we see the scene after Jesus had died on the cross, after he rose again on the third day, here he is, he appeared to over, uh, over 500 witnesses, and, and now he's, on the, he's about to ascend into heaven, and he tells them, you are about to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you're going to be my witnesses, right? Sharing the gospel, sharing the story, the good news of Jesus. You're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And Jesus said this, and he starts to float away. And, and of course, you saw through the book of Acts how they, they took it, and the Holy Spirit did come. Salvation started happening. They started planting churches. Mighty things started happening. But it was centered by sharing the gospel. Sharing the gospel. Now, now, my good friend in, in, in Denver, Colorado, his name is Greg Steer, and, and this is what he says. I really like what he says. He says, you've probably heard the quote, preach the gospel, if necessary, use words. I cringe when I hear it. The apostle Paul wouldn't have liked it either. I changed it to preach the gospel, it's necessary. Use words. Not if necessary. It is necessary. Use words. Share the gospel. When it comes to the gospel, we must live it and give it. Oh, now that, I don't know about you this morning, but that steps on some toes, steps on my toes a little bit because sometimes I don't want to share the gospel. Sometimes I'm not comfortable sharing the gospel. Sometimes I use all of the excuses that's going through my mind not to share the gospel. But it's important to share the gospel. Now, I've shared this with you the last time I was here. But it's too good not to share again. But unless we start looking at the way Jesus did it, we're not going to do it effectively. Uh, and here's my question. To grow the kingdom, do you have compassion for the lost? If we're looking at growing the kingdom, we have to have passion or we're not going to be effective. If, you're in, if you have a job and you do not have passion for it, you hate it, it's miserable, you just show up to get a paycheck, how effective are you really being on that job? Well, not really effective. But if you're passionate about something, if you're serious about something, you're going to give your all. You're going to give 100% because it's something that you take pride in. Well, my question for you is how compassionate are you for the lost? Do you have compassion for the lost? And that leads me to the scripture in Matthew chapter 9 this morning. Matthew chapter 9 verses 36 through 38. Here's the awesome picture of Jesus. He's in his ministry. He's traveling to different villages and he's sharing and he's teaching and he's sharing uh, the good news and, and he's talking to people and he's making relationships to people and, he, and he's um, uh, healing people and, and doing all the miracles. But when he went to the crowds... He had something, he, he saw them differently. And I want to read that passage this morning. It says, when he, Jesus, saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Well, that's good. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Now here is, my, here is my hashtag. I've said it to you last time and I hope that you remember, but if not, I'm going to share it with you. But here's what I ask you. We had to have Jesus eyes. You can't truly gospelize until you have Jesus eyes. And my question is, are you gospelizing with Jesus eyes? Because when Jesus looked at the crowd, he didn't see just the bad. He saw the broken. He had compassion for them, not with a judgmental look, but with a compassionate look. Now, I'll be honest with you. I have a little bit of human flesh sometimes. And when I have people coming in, I start judging them a little bit. I'll look at the guy that comes in the back and I'll say, okay, who is this guy? I've never seen him before. Wait a second. He has a bulge in that right pocket. I wonder if it's, what is in that pocket? Could it be a gun, a knife? What is there? And then I'll see another person and I'm like, oh, man. 
I know I, I just know that kind of guy. He's going to come and ask for money after the service. I know he is. He's going to ask for if we can put him up in a hotel or if we can give him some money or something. And then I saw, I see the next the person to come in and I thought, oh, no. Here they are. I know them. They're looking at our TVs. They're looking at our projectors. They're looking at our sound equipment. I'm going to have to make sure we lock the church tonight because they might come in and try to steal some things. Well, that's who I am. At 14 years as a police officer it, it, here in Moralton, I had to uh, see some bad people. And I've been burned a lot. And people lied to me a lot. And sometimes I have trust issues. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't trust people. But here you have Jesus. When he saw the crowds, he didn't see the crack addict. He didn't see the prostitute. He didn't see the person that might be stealing. He didn't see the person that's going to be begging for money. He saw the broken. He saw the lost. He saw the people that needed a shepherd, that needed someone to help lead them. Jesus saw people through the eyes of his own that was different than our human eyes. And until we can start having the eyes of Jesus, we cannot effectively reach the people with compassion like he did until we start having compassion. Hey, that makes, that, that, that's hard to do. It's hard to do, but we have to step it up. We have to step up and say, I'm not afraid to look at the world through the eyes of Jesus and not through a judgmental human point of view. Well, some of you might say, I can't do that. I can't do that. I don't know if I can do that. That's too much change. I would have to change some things in my life for me to have an outlook on that or to do that kind of thing. And that's kind of, my, kind of my motto, our motto this year, is that when everything changes, God remains the same. I'll tell you what, I, I always say that we're going to do five years in Romania, reassess. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking because my three kids are graduating and starting college, it's about time to come back, pastor a church somewhere. Go ahead and come back and, and, and start going, doing something in, this, you know, in, in Arkansas, closer to the kids. Because, you know, it would be about a time for a change, a good change. But God had pl other plans. Matter of fact, God has other plans. Our vision for Romania was hardly nothing like what we thought. The missions office taught us when you write your vision, write it with a pencil. Because when God shows up, you're going to have to erase most of it. Because God's going to lead you and he's going to open the doors and close the doors. And sure enough, when we moved to Romania, instead of working with the Romanians first, we worked with the Roma people. Totally different than we thought. That was a hard job. We're sitting there, I'm sharing the gospel with a group of people and we have we have. Kids riding bicycles down in between the groups. We have dogs and chickens running in and out of, over my legs. We have a ho runaway horse that came through one time and disrupted the service. Cops got caught on us for singing worship service because apparently we were singing too loud in the field. We had a major change. We was not expecting to work with that kind of people at the beginning. And then when we moved to Brashov, we thought it was going to go away that it did not go. It was going good, but we never expected the change that was going to happen through a war that was going to happen with, you, with Russia and Ukraine. And that was totally, it changed everything. It changed a lot of things. And before that, we had COVID, and that totally killed our Roma ministry with the adult program. Had major change with that. And now our kids are 5,500 miles away from Romania and going to live here, and we're moving back in October because God is not done with us in Romania yet. He has plans for us to do more church plants, but you're talking about change, and I'm sitting here thinking, now, Lord, listen, I can't do this. I don't know if, I can, if I'm up for the task. This is too much change. Everything that we thought we was going to do, we're not doing and he says, let me tell you something. When everything around you changes, I remain the same. I'm still the same God that called you five years ago to Romania. And I'm still the same God that's going to lead you through the next two or three or five or however many years. And when he says that, it kind of hurts a little bit. But my question for you this morning, Grace, is what has God been doing for you in your life? What has he called you guys to do? What is he trying to change in your own life? And are you getting a little stiff on God? Or are you kind of putting your heels in the ground and saying, Whoa, God, I don't know if I can do that. That's different. That's changed. I'm not sure if that's really what you want me to do. Are you really leading me in that area? But God says this. God wants, <laughs> In Hebrews 13 
8, he says, Jesus, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He never changes, but we do. We change our attitudes, our attitudes, our opinions about them much as we change socks. We change things. We, and some of us never change. We don't want to change because it's uncomfortable, so we remain the same no matter what. No matter how dirty our socks are, we're not going to change them. Right? I'm talking about spiritually speaking here. But we have to look at what is God doing? And are you willing to change and go in that direction that God's moving in? Are you wanting to join God in his mission? Or are you wanting to have your own little mission on your own little private island somewhere there in your spiritual, uh, your spiritual uh, uh, awakening or whatever? You get the point that I'm saying. Here's the deal. We're here to go to Romania, to plant churches, but more importantly, to share the gospel. The gospel is the most important. You might ask me this morning, well, what is the gospel message? What is this gospel? I've heard the word gospel. I've I've heard Jesus' name. I've heard people, but I don't really know a lot about church. I don't know really a lot about what's happening. I don't really know a lot about a lot of things. I just kind of keep to myself, especially when it comes to religion. Well, let me tell you, if you're here this morning and you've never been to church, or or maybe you've been to church but you don't understand, or, or maybe you've been to church a lot but you never heard a clear gospel presentation, the gospel message that I'm talking about more this morning is this, is that you, you are special. God loves you. He created you to have a relationship with him. God wants a relationship with us. God created the first two humans, Adam and Eve, and he created them to have a relationship with them, to walk with them in the cool of the morning, to, have, to be able to, to, to walk beside, their side, beside them. He created them because he loves them. He loves us as well, but our sins separates us from God. You might say, well, wait a minute. I don't know. I don't sin. I've never killed anybody. I've never, you know, uh, done anything crazy like that. But listen, sin is sin. Lying is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Uh, uh, Looking at someone with lust in your heart. If you look at a, a girl with lust in your heart or a guy with lust in your heart, all that is sin. And sin separates us from God. We cannot have a relationship with God any longer because our sin, it divides us from an all perfect God. And in Romania and even in America, even in Arkansas, even in Russellville, Arkansas, we have a problem with thinking that we can do away with our sins by doing good things. You see, sins can't be taken away by good deeds. There's no matter what you do. You can go to church. You can read your Bible. You can be nice. You can shake people's hands. You can, you can do all the things and, be, and, and not make it on God in in relationship with God because sins cannot be removed by doing good things. You can't take your sins away on our own works. I've tried. I know some of you might have tried. It's not going to happen. I don't care if I'm a pastor. I don't care if I'm a priest. If I'm... It doesn't matter who you are. No one is perfect. The Bible says our best is like filthy rags. The Bible says that no one can make it on their own works. You can't be good enough. Now, that is bad and it's good. The bad thing is, is we're not perfect. The good thing is, is Jesus had a plan. God has a plan because Jesus paid the price for your sin while he's di- when he died on the cross and he rose again. Jesus paid the price. I arrested many people in my career, took them to court, set them in front of a judge. The crimes was read out loud. Everything they'd done wrong, every, every law they broke was read, and there always was a sentence. And the judge would say, I'll find you guilty of whatever it is. And then he would take his gavel and he would, boom, he would hit it on the wood. And he was sentenced. Well, spiritually speaking, every one of us are going to stand before God and all of your sins are going to be read out loud and God is going, it's going to be guilty. It's a guilty sentence because none of us are good enough. But the good news is Jesus he paid the price. So he is the man in the courtroom that will stand up and that will raise his hand and say, listen, I've paid the price for their sin. And through the blood of Jesus, we're not guilty. 
we're acceptable. And that is amazing news. Anyone that will believe in Jesus alone can have salvation. Now let me tell you this morning, it's important for you to know this morning that it's Jesus alone. Not Jesus and Muhammad, not Jesus and Buddha, not Jesus and, and whatever other God you want to throw in the mix. It's only Jesus. If you trust and believe in Jesus alone, he'll come in and save you. Now, let me explain this to you. It's not just saying, oh, I believe in Jesus. I mean, even Satan believes in Jesus. The, the demons believe in Jesus. The fallen angels believe in Jesus. It's not just the fact that I believe in Jesus. It's the fact that you're saying, I'm a sinner. God loves me. He, he wants a relationship with me. But because of my sin, I'm separated from God. And I can't get to God of doing good things, but he paid the price and I put my faith in him and his work on the cross. That if I just put my faith in him, he will give me a free gift of salvation. That's what you're believing in. Now here this morning, I just ask, I got to ask you a question. Have you ever gave your life to Jesus? Have you ever, do you even realize that, that you're separated from God? And that you need him. And if you do realize that, here's a question I have for you. If the gospel message makes sense this morning, what's stopping you right now from giving your life to Jesus? You might say, well, I'm uncomfortable. Well, I don't really know these people. Well, I don't really know you, Brother Brian. I don't know who you are really good. I get kind of uh, shy here. Or you might say, I'm not sure if I'm ready. And let me tell you, let me make sure that you hear me clearly. I'm, it's not my job this morning to coerce you into conversion. I just want to paint a picture that you can accept or reject. You have to be the one to accept it or reject it. I can't force you to do anything. But if you're here this morning and you know that you're a sinner and you want to have a relationship with Jesus and you want to give him your life, you can do that this morning. But what's holding you back? And then the second group of people I want to talk to this morning as we close. Matter of fact, maybe we can have some, a pianist or something during the time of invitation. Maybe the second group of people here this morning, maybe, maybe you're saved, which means you've already given your life to Jesus. You're a follower of Jesus. But maybe you, you've really been stuck because God wants to do something in your life, but you don't want the change. The change makes you nervous. And you're a little nervous about changing some things. And so you're just kind of stuck in a, in a spot this morning. If that's you, maybe, maybe you need to make a decision with God that, you know what? I'm going to follow you no matter what. Because you're the same yesterday, today, to the end. You're the same God. Your, your way is better than my way. And I'm going to say yes to whatever call you're giving me. Maybe that's you this morning. My, my question for you is what's stopping you from doing that this morning? For saying yes to Jesus. Matter of fact, I'm going to end the message this way. I'm going to challenge some of you. I'm, hopefully I'm going to challenge all of you. And then I'm going to pray and then we're going to have a time of invitation. And those that would like to, 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 to get up out of the altar or out of their seat and come kind of in. A, we don't have an altar necessarily, but we have some... some uh, some steps here. If you want to come up to the, to the front of the church and just pray and just talk to Jesus, you can. Or you can do it right there where you're sitting at. It doesn't matter. But here's the question. Here's my question to you again this morning. What has God called you to do this morning? Has he called you to make a move? Has he called you to make a change? Has he called you to give him uh, your life? Or has he called you to, 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 to change with to, to change and, and to follow him no matter what it's going to look like? If that's you this morning, if you know that God wants you to do something different than you're doing today, I ask, who is brave enough? I know we're Baptist, and as Baptists we don't like to move. But who is brave enough to stand up right now this morning and just, just where you're at and say, I'm willing to change whatever that change might be hey how many of you would do that i challenge you this morning right now if you're willing to stand just make it make your presence known i'm willing to change this morning for jesus i'm willing to do what jesus wants me to do whatever it is how many of you want to do that come on i don't see nobody standing up i hope that the holy spirit will light a fire under you this morning who's willing to stand up in your seat where you are right now and say i want to give my, my my everything to jesus not just salvation but just following him and his ways is that you this morning are you afraid to stand up 
I want to see people stand up this morning. Come on, we have one here. Thank you. Those that's willing to stand up for Jesus. Those that want to just make a change in their life. Can that be you this morning? Guys, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Don't be ashamed, uh, scared of change. Because Jesus loves you. And he has a plan for you. I promise you that. I want to pray for you this morning. And then as I, I end the prayer, anybody's welcome to come to the front or right where you are. But let's take a few minutes just to let that soak in. And let's do business with God. Father, this morning we want to come to you. Thank you for this, this challenging messages that even challenging me as well, Father. I'm one of the ones that are standing with these people that says, I'm willing, God, to change. If, that, if, if changing is what I have to do to move in your direction, that I want to do it. Father, I pray for those in this room that doesn't know you as their Savior, that doesn't know you personally, Father. I pray this morning that they are convicted and that they'll give their life to you this morning. But Father, those that are already saved, I pray that they'll make some commitments this morning to follow you. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done for us. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.